Hello, and welcome to the AdventureCraft tutorial. And this tutorial, uh, we'll be covering how to make uh, custom items. And in particular, we're going to make a, a gravity wand, so it's similar to like the gravity gun, per se, in uh, Half-Life 2. So, uh, start off. Uh, so, in your map folder, you're going to be creating a folder called Items. And in there, you can put in here text files that will actually describe how the item should work. So, the item that we're working with, as I said, was the uh, it's a gravity gun type thing. Uh, so we'll call it a gravity wand. So you open it up, create your file. Uh, there's a few different uh, variables in here that are kind of important. Item ID. Uh, this needs to be a unique number that doesn't uh, overlap with, like, say, any of the current existing item IDs. If it does, it will spin up an error and, uh, inside of AdventureCraft when it tries to create the item. Uh, but in this case, we set 20,001, which will work fine. The icon index here we set to 184, and if we go over to here and look at our items.png, um, 184 is going to be this wand over here. Uh, so that's where that is. And uh, back to. Um, as I said, its name, we're going to call it the gravity wand. Max stack size is 1. Uh, that means that you can only put one on there, you can't put multiple ones together. So if you want to make like a money or currency or grenades or something like that, stack them all up there, max stack size. Um, max item damage equals 200. We're going to be using item damage to track the energy of this wand. And uh, it'll use uh, every tick uh, it, we're using the wand, it's going to tick off one, it's going to create all one damage. So this will last then for 10 seconds. And our script that it's going to run whenever we uh, right click or left click with it will be called gravitywand.js. So over here, that means then when we see our script, scripts folder, see over here, there is a gravity wand.js, and that is what it's calling. And I've already got that open over here. So the gravity wand.js. So first off, we come over here and we define a couple of pre variables called previous target and previous time. Um, and if they're undefined, we're going to go ahead and initialize them to null and zero. The purpose of these will be come apparent in a moment, but it's basically so we can uh, track the previous uh, frame's uh, actual target it's worked on. Next, I'm uh, specifying a constant basically here, uh, where reach distance, this is means they'll uh, reach out to 32 meters. You can change it to whatever you want. Um, after this, uh, we got to calculate from uh, what position we're starting at to what position our wand's going to act upon. So we start off at the player's position. We then take the player's look vector, and we're going to scale it by the reach distance. So when we scale it by the reach distance, now it's become up. To, it's actually a, a vector of 32 meters because the look vector is actually a normalized vector. So it has a length of one, and a length of one times 32 then is a length vector of 32. And then after that, we add on our position. Next, we're going to ray trace, and ray trace means that we're going to actually trace through all the collision. And we're going to see if we hit blocks or an entities, whatever is, uh, it hits first, is we're going to actually get back. And that gets stored in this variable called results. Results uh, from a ray trace is going to be a th uh, array of three different things. One, the first vect uh, entry in it's going to be hit position. Um, if this is hit position is going to be null if it didn't hit anything. But in the case it does hit something, it's going to be a vector three. And with that, we can actually get the x, y, z of uh, where it actually hit. Uh, the second thing in there called results, which is the index one, uh, give us the block coordinates if we hit a block. And if we don't hit a block, then uh, result two is going to have the entity uh, hit by the uh, thing. And if that's null, then we didn't actually hit an entity either. Now, as I said, there's a previous target and previous time. Um, previous target, uh, so get the current time. Uh, we're going to see if previous target is not null. And then we're going to subtract the uh, current time from the previous time and see if it equals 1. If it does equal 1, that just means that the previous frame, we actually had a target lock. Uh, the reason we're doing this is we're going to then set our entity hit to the previous target. This way, uh, once I lock on with uh, my wand, I don't have to worry about getting, losing it to another entity here and stuff like that if I hit a block or accidentally get off. This way, it gives us good traction. Um, then after this, we're going to set previous time to current time previous target to entity hit, that's good. 
Next, there's just some variables uh, for describing how some particles are going to work that you're going to see later. Uh, basically, here we have the base particle color, which is a reddish color. A variable that says, are we going to add particles or not? So it starts off as false, and we're going to set true later. Particle probability, uh, the probability of it actually spawning various particles in spaces. So that's by default 20%. So as I said, that entity hit has a variable of uh, the actually of the entity that were hit by the ray trace. And if, and if you remember before, I actually said we're going to use the damage to actually track the uh, uh, energy left for our wand. So if the, uh, the item's damage is less than the max damage, then that, is, that means we have energy left to be used. And I should clarify that item used is going to always be set to the uh, variable, to the item that was actually right-clicked. So that's why we can actually track our information on that item. Now, uh, we need to calculate the target's new position. So we get our entity hits position. Um, we're going to then offset it for its height and a Y offset. So we're right flat dab in the middle of the uh, entity. Uh, we calculate the distance to the uh, entity. And then we're going to calculate the new position for the entity, which is just going to be the distance that we just got for the entity uh, multiplied by the look vector of the player plus the player's position. So this way, it's always the, we're pushing the uh, entity so it's always in the middle of our screen at the specified distance. Next, we're going to actually make sure we can actually ray trace from the play, uh, target's current position to the new position. If there's any intersection, that means uh, result zero is not going to be null, and that means we're going to set instead new position to that uh, vector. So that way we can't actually drag entities through walls and such. Now, we actually have to set that position on the entity. So we get our new position, we're going to adjust it for the height, so this way it's in the, in the Y offset, so that way it's in the middle of the uh, entity. And then we set the entity's position to that place. Um, next, I'm going to get position. Uh, just copying the uh, vector of the new position. That way, we use this later for particles. We can uh, then actually know where exactly we hit. So we now calculate the new velocity uh, that we're going to be using for this entity. So uh, we take the, the new position for that entity minus the previous position. And now we have a new vector. Uh, we get the length of this vector. If its distance is greater than 2, we're going to uh, scale the uh, vector so it's, uh, then its length is actually going to be 2. This way, uh, the max velocity that we can impart on it is going to be 2 meters uh, per tick. Then, we actually set this velocity on the hit entity. Now, because we've set a velocity, and we don't want this entity moving around while we have it uh, grabbed with our wand, we're going to set it stunned. Uh, that means it won't actually be uh, running update ticks, and it'll just be paralyzed, basically. Uh, and then we're also going to set item to use uh, damage. We're going to in increment it by one, because uh, this consumes one uh, unit of energy. And then, as I said, we want to add particles later, so we're going to set the variable add to true. Now, at the case that we didn't hit entity, and we have uh, damage is greater than zero, I've now I have this other great little option in the tool where the wand can actually recharge by turning grass into dirt. Basically we eat up the grass and that gives us uh, 20 units of energy. So, check to see if the block that we hit, if it's uh, 2, uh, 2 happens to be uh, the, the uh, block ID for grass. If it is 2, uh, then we're going to come over here, take our item used damage, uh, subtract 20 from it, and we're going to take the max of that with uh, 0. That way we never have negative damage. Now, then we convert the block to dirt. So set that block coordinates now to 3, that block ID. And because the block ID of 3 is dirt. So we turn that from grass to dirt. Now, we set the base red color of our particles to 0 0.2 and base green to 0 0.8. So now we have a green particle instead of a red particle. And of course, we have to add particles. And because I really want all the particles to show up, I'm going to set the particle probability to 1. Finally, for this uh, turning this grass, we're also going to generate like eight particles that are just on top of the grass, where they have the uh, actual green and stuff. So what we do here is you have a uh, generate a random uh, color, uh, which is basically it's an offset of 0 0.05 around the color. Uh, then we spawn the particle at our block coordinates, except one incremented up, and this way we're going to get some nice uh, just particles over top of the grass that's been eaten up. Finally, we have those add particles variable that we talked about previously. 
Uh, this is where we're actually going to be adding particles. So go ahead, add particles if add particles is set. That will come there. Now we get the distance to our hit. And what we're going to do is every one meter from the player to the uh, hit, we're going to add particles potentially. So increment, so iterate on from i equals 0 to i is less than distance. We're going to take math.random. If random will generate a variable from 0 to 1. And if that uh, number happens to be less than a particle probability, we're going to add a particle at this position. So we add to the uh, current player's uh, the position that we have uh, the look vector, because the look vector is uh, incremented every about one meter. Generate our color, and then we're going to spawn the particle. And what this so this way we have a nice line of particles. So let's check out how that looks now. And it's, uh, so here we go with the wand. So we can see that it's got the icon we specified, and it's got the name of gravity wand. That's good. See us holding it here. So to play around with it, we've got over here in this fenced area, we've got three little dudes. We got a zombie, pig, and a cow. So what I'm gonna do here? I'm gonna pick up the pig. See, it's actually moving around. Can't run it into the ground as I as we did with that stuff. What we can do, so we can throw the pig and try to grab it again. And we grabbed it. And our, you can now see that our wand just ran out of energy. And so that lasts about 10 seconds as expected. And what we can do is we can eat up some grass and restore our wand. So let's go grab this zombie. Throw it up there. Oh, trying to hurt me. I'm going to run away from him while I paralyze him. And throw him over there. Boom. I don't like you. I'm going to throw you up in the air and watch you die. Yeah. So, it's a pretty neat item. Some grass. Over there. So, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And you can see that scripting is fairly simple, especially with these new custom items. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy watching this tutorial.